Hi, this is Steve with Homestrung Jewelry, and this is a Tree of Life pendant. Any jewelry maker who works with wire, I think, is required sometime during their jewelry making career, are required by law to make at least one Tree of Life pendant. Today, I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I think the beauty of the Tree of Life pendant is that it doesn't require a lot of material and it doesn't require a lot of tools. The only real materials that you need is wire and some sort of a bead to use as leaves as foliage in the tree. The wire that we're going to be using today is from the Gemstone Orphanage September kit, but you can use whatever you'd like. We're going to have some one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. This is a copper wire dead soft in this particular case. It's also enameled. And then you're going to need some 26 gauge or 0.4 millimeter wire. And this is going to form the frame and the tree itself. You're also going to need some sort of beads for this. Now I'm using chips in this example and that's what we're going to be using in the in the in the instructions today. But you can use just about anything else in this case. I have used the little four millimeter imitation jade beads that were in the September box, but you could also use crystals, you could use metal beads, you could use gemstone beads, you could use rondelles. There's just, just whatever you would like to do. Tools that you're going to need, again, it's very simple. Basically, you just need a pair of flush cutters, you're going to need chain nose pliers, and then we're going to need round nose pliers today. There's also a couple of mandrels that we're going to need. I've got a little five millimeter uh, mandrel. This is a knitting needle, which I'm going to use to form the bell. And then we need something big and round in order to form the actual frame of the pendant. Uh, we have a whole box of things here at Homestrung that we use. I have some PVC pipe fittings that are various sizes. Today, we're just going to use this this oversized pill bottle, which just happens to be two inches, which is the size of the project that we're going to be doing today. Other tools and things that you might want to have but aren't really necessary is a pair of scissors. Uh, that's to cut the paper tape, which I use to help me in the project. It's completely optional. If your wire is really kinky and bent, some sort of a wire straightener or nylon jaw pliers is nice. And then of course you're gonna need a ruler in order to measure the wire. But even this, you could probably get by without yeah, if you're really good at judging sizes and lengths. I also quite often will use a Sharpie to mark my wire, but in this particular case, the wire is black. The Sharpie just does not show up on it. So we're going to have to use something different. First thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the wire. And we're going to start with the frame wire, which again is an 18 gauge, which is about the smallest wire you're going to want to use to form a good solid frame for this project. 16 gauge, 14, I've seen even 12 gauge used. It just depends on, on uh, how heavy you want to have the pendant. For this one today, we're making kind of a large pendant, two millimeters, which is a good size. I recommend it for a first time because it gives you lots of room to work. It's not a real tight space. And so we're going to need 10 inches of this wire, which I believe is about 25 millimeters or 25 centimeters, excuse me. For those of you who do metric, So 10 inches, and we will cut that with our cutters. And then we're also going to need to cut the 26 gauge wire into six inch lengths. We're gonna need more than one. In fact, we're gonna need 21 of these. 
And so I usually just cut one and then use that to cut all of the others. We're going to use 20 of these wires to form the tree. The 21st wire is to help with the bell, to hold the bell together. Then as far as the beads go, you're going to need 30 to 50 beads. Again, I'm using chips. And chips, this, this is great because uh, they're different shapes, they're different sizes, they look a lot like leaves, and it gives you a chance to kind of customize and fit things into the frame, the framework. But again, you can use just about anything that you would like. 30 to 50 of those. We will begin the project by making the metal frame and we use this mandrel. Again, this mandrel that I've got here is just under two inches in diameter. And of course you can make this any size that you want. In fact, for earrings, two inches might be a little bit big. But we're gonna take this and try to wrap this around so that the two ends of the wire are equidistant from where they from where they cross over each other. And here's where, if I was using a different wire, I would bring in my Sharpie, and up here where the two wires cross each other, I would make a mark. Can't do that with the black wire, so what I'm going to do is I am going to grab one of the wires, and then with my chain nose pliers, I will grab this wire and make a 90 degree bend. And we'll put it back onto the mandrel and bring the wire in tight. And where the two wires cross each other, we're again going to Grab that wire, take our chain nose pliers, and make another 90 degree bend. And I'm taking and straightening out the wire a little bit. There we go. That fits right there. I've made one of them a little longer than the other, and that's okay. But here's where I will use my tape. You don't need a very big piece of tape. About half an inch, three quarters of an inch is all that you need, because we're just going to use this to hold the wires together. And again, this is completely optional. I just find it makes it a little easier to handle the wire if you do this. So we're going to bring the two wires together. Work with them to keep them straight. And then up here at the end, we're going to take our tape and wrap it around the two wires just to help hold them together. Now I'll wrap it two, three times around. Then with this piece at the end, I will fold it in, make a little flag, which makes it easier to remove the tape later on. Okay, here's where we bring in our other mandrel. And I will actually set this on the table and hold it down. And I will set the five millimeter mandrel on the two wires about a quarter of an inch from the place where they come together. And holding it in place, I will take these wires and pull them over the top of the mandrel and then push them down. So I'm actually bending it Okay, so we've pushed down 
So we've brought those wires together a little bit and we can move this, bend this bell forward towards the front of the project a little bit, keeping those wires in the back straight. And now you can leave the tape on or you can take it off at this point. It makes it a little easier to do the next wrap if you do take it off. So I'm going to do that. And then we're going to take our first 26 gauge wire and we're going to secure this bell. And we're going to do that. By doing three wraps around the back side of one of these loops. So leaving about a oh, three quarters of an inch tail. We're going to wrap once. And I took the tape off just because it's a little easier to get that wire up there around the wire. So we've got the three coils. We'll push them together. You see those there, and we'll bring this down a little bit. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap the 26 gauge wire around both, both wires in the loop. That tight. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. I'm going to straighten that bell up a little bit to okay, pull it tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it three times around one side of the frame. Bring it around to the back. We've got three good coils there. And then what we're going to do is take our cutters. Gonna trim the tails off. Both there. And over here. And we'll take our chain nose pliers and just pinch in the ends there so that we don't have anything poking out causing us any problems. Now we've got these two wires that are hanging down. We're going to take our flush cutters and we're going to cut them off at about a half an inch from where the top of the frame is. And you could just completely cut these off if you want, but I kind of like to put these to use. So we're going to separate them out and I'm just going to use my round nose pliers and just make a little loop on each side. Just loop it up so it touches. Do the same thing on the other side. You'll see I just keep repositioning my pliers till I've got that, got that little butterfly. Just kind of a nice way to keep that, keep that clean there, even though it's gonna be in the back and we'll probably even cover it up. Put my mandrel in and just kind of straighten everything up and tighten all the different wires. And there's our frame for our tree of life. You have the option 
to hammer this uh, ring a little bit. Okay, again, this is completely optional. You're going to need a hammer, either a ball peen hammer or a chasing hammer of some sort. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten the wire just a little bit. Mostly down here at the bottom. But I'm going to hammer it all the way around. But like I said, mostly down here at the bottom. So that it's going to taper. Not a lot. Just enough to give it a little bit of a flattened shape. Now the side that's against your your metal block or your anvil will have the smoother side. So I'm kind of working it that way. Again, this is completely optional, but if you've got a hammer and you like to hit things, this is a great opportunity to put it to work. All right. It also stiffens the wire a little bit but it also changes its shape, so you need might need to push it back into a round shape. All right, we've got three wires that we put here together. We're gonna hold them together, straighten them up, keep them lined up side by side. And we're going to take these wires and we're going to go to the bottom of the frame and leaving about, oh, maybe as much as an inch of a tail. I'm holding it there with my thumb. I'm going to take these three wires, keep them together as much as possible, and we're going to wrap them around, holding that tail in place. We're going to wrap them together once around the frame. Now I'm going to leave the first wire out here by itself. I'm going to take the next two wires and we're going to get a little random here now. But I'm going to take these two wires and I'm going to wrap them once twice, around the frame, bring it up, I'm going to take, leave one wire there by itself, and take the last wire, and I'm going to wrap it once, twice, three times up here. Let's push all these together. Now from this point forward, it's important to keep the long ends up, keep the short ends down. And what we're going to do is take another set of either two or three, and we will start working it the other direction. So let's take two strands. I'll set this down. Normally I would just keep going but just to show you, I'm going to take two strands here, keep the wires together, work it a little bit so they'll stay together. I'm going to turn this around just because I'm right-handed and this is easier. Leave about a one-inch tail, and then I'm going to wrap these two around the frame wire, keeping them together pushing the wraps tightly together. Then I'm going to leave one wire, the first wire by itself, and then I'm going to take this second wire and wrap it. I think I'm going to go four times. This time it doesn't matter. You can do it one, two, three, four, whatever you would like, just to give some variety to what's going to become the root structure. Now I'm going to push those coils together, 
push these push this together with the three that we just did earlier and we've got the beginning of our roots and our tree and what we're going to do is just work ourselves back and forth with either two or three sets of wires so like i'm going to go back over here to the right got those three wires i'm going to pick i'm going to pick out two more line the wires up straighten them put them lay them side by side so preferably they don't overlap if they do overlap it's not a big deal and now we're going to do the same thing again about three quarters of an inch one inch tail i'm going to wrap the two wires we'll go around once push the coil together leave one wire there and then just do one two or three wraps with the second wire i think i'm just going to do two this time push it up and push the coils together looking kind of fun this is probably the hardest part of the whole project for me is getting this basic you know wire structure put together I'm going to continue do another set on that side and I've got three wires this time pull them together keep them together and leave a little tail now there's lots of different ways to do the tree of life pattern some people will you know double up the wires just wrapping them around cutting the wire twice as long but i kind of like this way because then i have a little bit of variation that i could do at the end when i'm cleaning it up i have more options available to me Okay, we're going to leave one wire out. And my wires have gotten twisted here. So I'm going to take the two wires and I'm going to do two wraps with the double wires, which gives me a little more space between these roots. And you can start to see what we're doing here as we build this this root structure down here you see there's different spaces between the wires so I'm going to go back over to the left hand side here and take three wires hold them together stretch them out so that they stay together, that they don't overlap any more than possible. And again, because I'm right-handed, I'll flip it over just so it's easier for me because I can hold this with my non-dominant hand and do the wraps. Got two wires left. And we'll put it over on the right-hand side. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to form the root structure. Make sure everything is tight together. All these coils. Everything's pointing in the right directions. Try to keep it somewhat centered. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start twisting wires into roots. And we're only going to go up about a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to take these two wires on the end and I am just going to twist them together. Just a couple of twists. And 
and I'm going to take the next three wires, which you can see aren't even that close together, and I'm going to twist them together. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to join them. This one that I've got over here on the far side that I was twisting, I'm going to twist it a little more, and then I'm going to bring all five wires together. And do a little twist. You can see what's happening there. So let's grab a couple more. You're going to do this all the way along the bottom. I promise you it gets easier here in a minute. Once the roots are set and the roots are strong, okay, I've got two of them there, and I'm going to bring in, I'm going to bring in the third wire. I'm going to bring two more in. Twist it two, three times, and then I'm going to bring these three. Now let's do, let's do another set. Now I'm going to bring all three of these twists together. You can see the three of them there. And I'm going to bring them and combine them. Sometimes you may need to pull the wires out to the front. So I've got these three. Twist them up. Grab two more. You know, I think I'm going to leave that one, that one there by itself. I'm going to bring these three, or these two, that I've got here. And I'm going to bring in a third one. And then I'm going to bring these two on the end and twist them together. If I can get a hold of them. Sometimes it helps if you separate them out so that you can grab them like a twist tie and bring them in. And then I'm going to bring this over, tighten that up a little bit. And then we're going to bring it over to this one. and twist those together. Let's see how we're looking. Oh, wild. I think this one needs a couple, this one here needs a couple more twists. This one, three that I've got all by itself. Okay, so we've got a root structure down here. Push them all together, and now we're going to take all of these roots and we're going to turn them into a tree. So I'm grabbing them all together, and we're going to begin to twist. You can see how that's coming together now. And here's where you can you play with it a little bit. You can make the tree go straight up. You can make it bend a little bit. I kind of like the little bit of a, a bonsai bend to my tree. So I'm going to bend mine over to the side a little bit. Now, as you tighten these wires, it also could affect the shape of your frame. So always keep that in mind. Keep watching the frame. 
All right, so the worst is done. And you can make this tree just as long or as short as you want. You'll see on this one here, I kind of made the trunk of the tree a little bit longer, made the roots a little longer. On this one with the chips, it's about the same as what, what we're doing right here. So and I think I'm gonna quit my trunk right there for now. And we're gonna begin to pull out the branches. This is the point where you wish you had a comb and you could just comb all these wires out and separate them a little bit, but such a thing hasn't been invented yet that I know of. Okay, so now we are going to create the branches for the tree. And it's just like the roots, except just in reverse order. And what we're going to do is take somewhere between four and six of the wires together. And down here on the bottom branches, which are, I would think would be a little heavier, I'm going to do this first one with six wires. And we're just going to twist a little bit. And then we will separate out, just like branches branch out, we will separate this out into smaller groups. Again, I wish I had a, they had like a wire comb. And we'll bring this down. Just keep them tight. Sometimes it's easier if you separate them out a little bit so you've got something to grab onto while you're twisting the wires. If they're separated, it's a little easier. Take these two, separate them out. It's a good idea to keep the, the twist going in the, the same direction, and that way you don't forget. Then what we'll do is we'll take go back to the main trunk and do a twist. And then we'll pull off another set of four to six. I think we'll see if we can get five into this one. We'll twist them. Create another branch over here. And we can bring the pliers in if we need to to squeeze things together. Take these two and put them together. twist the trunk again. Separate another one over to this side. And then separate the smaller branches again. And 
our final group. So we're back to 20 individual wires. And now we'll begin adding the chips. All right, we've got all the wires pulled out, more or less. Kind of looks like it was struck by lightning, but we're going to take care of that here in just a minute. We're gonna bring our beads out. And we're gonna begin on one side and we'll begin adding beads onto these branches. If I find the holes. And you just kind of, with chips, you just kind of put what fits in there. And then when you've got your Put your leaves on, you're going to do about, you're going to do like two wraps around the frame wire. Try to keep those wraps close together. to the back and we go to the next wire and I like small chips but you can't always get the ones that you want when you're working with little tiny chips I think we can fit one more in there. Yeah, that's too big. Two good wraps in there. Try not to kink the wire. And it looks like we're only going to get one in there. It's just to keep things a little straighter as we're going along. Is I trim the wire as I go. So we bring in the flush cutters and we're on the back side. And we'll just pull these wires up so that the ends are on the back. And we'll trim those wires. It just makes it so that it's a little less cluttered as we go and we'll clean them up. Let's finish up this branch on this side this major branch. I like to put the smaller beads on the inside when possible. Oh, looks like you could fit one more in, so let's pull that out. And we get one more bead in here. Gosh, looks like we can fit two. So there's one major branch. 
Let's move over to the other side and we'll get this lower branch. At this point, this is just stringing. And we're going to wrap down towards the roots. Now, if it starts to get crowded, what you can do is you can either, like I'm going to twist this one all the way in, and we're going to add a bead over both wires, or you can actually take a wire and just wrap it and cut it without adding without adding anything onto it. I find 20, 20 wires up here can get a little bit crowded. The idea is just to make it look good. So here we've got a double wire and we'll just wrap them both. And this, this wire, we will just pull to the back. And we'll just trim it off. It's a little like pruning when things get a little heavy. Oh, we just keep going. And just keep trimming as you go. Okay, we got our beads in place. Just take your chain nose, go around, clean up all those little places where the, 
the wires are poking up, get them tucked down. Only takes a second. I just kind of fill with my finger and if I get poked, I know I need to get it down. Okay. So the tree part's done. Now we've got these wires hanging down underneath. Now the easiest thing to do would be just to fold them under and to trim them. But we're going to create this little kind of wavy root thing down here on the bottom. Like I said, you could just fold that under and trim it. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take sets of wires. And we just push a thumb or a finger on top. And we pull this wire around and rotate it while we're holding it in place. And we create this little, this little swirl that you can see there. Then I just fold that to the back and we can trim that off. Press down those ends, and you can see we've got this little swirling root here. Do the same thing with just two of them, and you can go one direction or the other. And do one or two rotations, but just kind of hold it down with your thumb so that it's flat as you're pulling it. See, we got another swirl there. Pull it to the back while you hold it up in front. Trim it off and tuck, tuck the wires down. And you just continue doing it. Over on this side, the wires are just a little short, but I think we can still do this. As you're doing this, you'll also, it's a good way to find all those other little places where you've got sharp pokey sticking up. As you're swirling, you'll find them. Okay, so we've got the, the swirling roots down there. We've got our leaves and branches up above. Just add a or add a cord, a chain, or a clasp, and you are finished. If you want to, you can rabbit ear out the bell a little bit. You don't need to. And there we have our tree of life. We'll put alongside the one variation that uses the little four millimeter rounds and our original. over here. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, but everyone needs to do one at some point in their wire jewelry making career. If you enjoyed this video, we would appreciate it if you would hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe. And if you hit the little bell notification, then you will be informed anytime we come out with a new video. If you'd like to see more wire type videos in the future, uh, go ahead and tell us down in the comments below. In the meantime, we appreciate you coming today and look forward to seeing you again in the future. Bye-bye.